Hello, Rob here, this is Joe. Uh, today we're gonna walk up Pendle Hill. Um, I met Joe on Monday on Weeks Hill uh, and he has kindly offered to be my walking partner, which adds to the excitement of it. I, uh, I've done a couple of walks on my own. Uh, I have warned him that I'm gonna be slow, very slow on the uphill. Uh, but he said it's not a problem. He's been to Everest Space Camp in the 1970s. Yeah, yeah. And wants to go again. So we have a, something in common there. I want to go 2020, 2021. But that's that. So we're heading up there. And it is really icy. Fun. See you later. Right, just a quick one. We're just about to start. And then walk up. Uh, it's pretty icy, it's cold, but brilliant views all the way around. The weather is absolutely perfect for it. Let's see at the top. So I'm completely out of breath. And I think a few other people are as well. Uh, I didn't realise it was going to be this steep. The pain's quite This is bad. my 81st birthday party. And it's this gentleman's 80, 81. And he's going up here quicker than I am. <laughs> Joe's been really good, he's it is stopping and pacing. If you didn't have the new boots on. <laughs> uh, if I didn't have the new boots, I'd be going quicker. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> but yeah, beautiful day. Uh, they are far too clean, aren't they, to be going out walking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but good views all round. Breather, and then head on back. It's really windy. It's bloody cold. Pendle Hill done. Weeks Hill was done on Monday. And Pennygan is the plan for this Monday coming. I'm feeling really good. Uh, feeling like I've accomplished something. Just my mood is so good. That, that's what this is, has, has done for me, really. Four weeks ago, before Christmas, I, w I was in a pretty bad place. I, well, if you spoke to my mum, she'd tell you she's the one that took me over to Leeds every day for my radiotherapy. I was having my breakdowns. Beth would tell you the same. Today I've been up Pendle Hill and it was cold, it was windy, the sun was out, and I had company. Uh, that company was in the form of Joe Hale, uh, a gentleman that I met at Weeks Hill on Monday. And he quite literally just said, we go at your pace, we take it steady. And that, that's what we did. Going up the steeper section, with Pendle Hill because you just walk through some fields over, over some bridges and then you literally just walk up the the side of Pendle Hill steps essentially until you get to the top bit and then it's just a stony track to the trig point and I must have stopped at least four or five times going up there we had discussions about um, my respiratory rate and that I'd be wanting to go quicker then I was able to, and I was breathing too hard, which was causing quite a lot of pain. And that pain gets quite severe. And we were discussing different things, whether the, the cold, how the cold will affect my chest breathing. And we came to the conclusion that if I slow down and reduce how much I'm breathing, the pain should be less. So I tried that and there were a couple more 
guys walking up behind us. One had been 81, the one that's uh, was earlier on in the video. And me and Joe discussed how much of a powerhouse he was. He was going a lot quicker than us. He was walking with another chap who stuck with us for the for the last last slog really. And this this 81 year old was up and away and we just took it steady and I set my pace at the gentleman that was walking with us and that, that helped a lot. The support and encouragement that Joe gave me was unbelievable. I, I feel like I'm talking about some massive achievement here, like I, I've walked up Mont Blanc or something like that and I know it's only Pendle Hill in Lancashire and the other walks that I've done are only small but for me personally what for what I've done and what we've been through over the last 12 months these are these are quite massive and my end goal is Everest Base Camp which again like I said before people may laugh and say it's gonna have one half lung um, or one and a half lungs. And again, this is something me and Joe discussed. How, will my doctors say that I can go to such altitudes? I'm gonna to have to discuss that with them um, before surgery. Well, well, I will discuss that with them. We were talking about the effects of me going out at the moment whether it's good for me in terms of the fact that I've got a tumour in my lung and these fluid build-ups. And I said, my main worry is that if I was out on a hill that my lung would collapse. I've had numerous lung collapses in the past, um, spontaneous. Apparently it's because I'm tall and skinny. There's a little bit of me that's wondering whether they're associated to the tumour, whether the tumour has been there and small and undetectable on scans in the past. Oh, it's all speculation, we don't know. Um, so yeah, that, that's it, that's it really. The, what, how I'm feeling now is absolutely fantastic. I've, I've come in, I've shared some pictures on social media, I've sat down, I've relaxed. And just reflecting on this last four weeks, three weeks of walking and the positive effects of just getting out for three or four hours and what it has had on me. And another th thing we discussed was obviously Joe, Joe's in his 60s, I'm 29 years old and every walk I've been on in the last three weeks I've had my phone out, I've been filming, I've been making these vlogs and I haven't seen anyone on the walks just, just when I get to the top or past people how much of an idiot I feel getting my phone out and trying to record me talking into my phone like I'm talking to people and this walk today has given me a bit of an opportunity to have a look at my surroundings and take it all in Rather than looking at my phone, I did a bit of filming. Um, but I've had a lot of conversations with Joe about Everest Base Camp, about his experience of it, and his plans to do it again, my plans to do it again. What the goal, what setting a goal, how setting a goal, sorry, has given me more, more of a, an outlook into the future. And we're also discussing that about, about life in in terms of that no one knows what is going to happen to them. One day you could get hit by a bus and that could be it. And he was saying that I have more of an insight into my future than most people do. With having cancer, I, I know that it's going to go one of two ways. I have the surgery, I recover and I carry on living with follow-up scans and all that kind of stuff. There's always going to be that element of, is it going to come back? Or I have the surgery, 
find out I've got more tumours and then we work on sorting that. That I, I have an insight into how things may go for me. And I've taken that insight. And I, yes, the first few months was shocking. But getting out and doing four walks, it sounds minuscule, it sounds really, really silly to me saying it now. But if I do pen again on Monday, and surgery is a week on Wednesday, and then say the Tuesday, before the day before my surgery, if I do another walk on that day, then I will have done six walks in January and then I have surgery, then it's going to be a long recovery and then I plan to get back out again. I, I plan to get out walking in part as part of my recovery and I'm going to get back to work. If there are more tumours, then I may not be able to do what I want to do. I may not be able to get out and do the walks. So a little bit of what I'm doing now is about achieving something and saying, I did something about my mental situation. Granted, the physical side of it has been really, really tough. And, and this is why I keep saying that I'm over-exaggerating about what I'm doing. The pain that I'm in is severe. Uh, it causes me to cough, it causes me to wince, and walking up, to, up the stairs at home is painful. Coughing, sneezing, all of that stuff is painful. So to then go out and walk up Pendle Hill and endure the pain that I'm going through, to me it's a massive, massive feat. And then I think about, I want to get to Everest base camp. So the training that I'm gonna to have to do post surgery is gonna to to be quite intense, especially if it's a two week trek. I'm gonna to have to do lots of training. And there's a bit of me that's scared from knowing that the lung surgery I've been through before, the pain afterwards is, it, it's unexplainable, the pain that you go through after having lung surgery. And the surgery that I'm facing is even more intense than what I've been through before. So I think what I'm saying is these small achievements may seem small to people viewing on the other side of the camera, but to me they are absolutely massive. And they, they, they are motivating me and pushing me to get to that end goal. And if Penny again on Monday is the last one or a walk on the Tuesday before my surgery is the last one, I can do for whatever reason, outcomes of surgery or pain afterwards, at least I've done something to start this process of achieving my goal. So I've waffled on a bit. Um, the reason why I filmed this section here is like I said, taking in the scenery and my surroundings about um, and having conversations with Joe. So, Monday, Penny again. And then next week, after, after Monday, I've got oncology appointments, uh, pre-ops, um, an appointment with Mind Matters for my counselling. So I'm gonna try and fit in another walk somewhere along the way. But I just wanna say thank you for your continued support and the messages I've been getting, it's helped massively. It's doing wonders, working wonders. So thank you very much. And I, um, I'll i keep you updated via my Facebook page and Instagram, Twitter. Thank you very much.